Hey my friends, welcome to At Home with Gigi. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video is all about beautiful, elegant fall DIYs. I cannot wait to share them with you. We're using upcycled items. We're also part of the first of the month collaboration. We got a lot going on, so let's just go ahead and get started. This is actually more of a hack than a DIY, but oh, I so love it. I'm using these two recycled candles, just plain old white tissue paper from the Dollar Tree and a sheet of printing paper. I've ironed out the wrinkles out of the tissue paper, wrapped it around the printing paper, and just taped it down. That is the key. I have taped the heck out of this thing, smoothed everything down really well, keeps it from jamming up your printer. I went to Canva, put in floral fall arrangements, and came up with this beautiful picture. Now y'all, you can Google and find anything and print it out, or you can even use a napkin, whatever your choice is. For this project, I wanted to use tissue paper, so we're going with that. Now I'm going to be doing what's called fussy cutting using scissors. Y'all know if you watch my videos, I prefer the water method. We use a tiny paintbrush and water, and just it gives it that uneven, organic look. Now, I prefer that, but Using scissors works better with tissue, at least, like I said, for me it does. So it takes a little extra minute, yep, but it's so worth it. And tissue paper is just so very forgiving when you decoupage with it, especially in putting it on a white surface, which y'all know I like to do. And obviously these candles are white, and this picture just melds into the candle. I can't wait for y'all to see the end. To me, it's just so beautiful. A little tip or trick that I've learned when fussy cutting, if you leave your backing on a napkin or put a piece of paper behind your tissue, it makes it more sturdy and easy to maneuver when you're doing the fine detailed cutting. It just makes your life a whole lot easier. Now this video is about upcycling and reusing things that you have on hand, which is why I'm using these candles and they're pure white and I wanted that background for this project but you can always use battery operated candles. You can get those at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, somewhere like that. Not all battery operated candles will work well with the heat method, so you may have to use Mod Podge to attach your napkin or tissue. I'm not going to use Mod Podge to attach this. I'm just going to use my blow dryer and just soften up and just kind of melt the wax just a tiny bit. And I'm going to find my placement. You know, I have to fiddle with it for forever. And then once I've found my placement, I've cut down a sheet of parchment paper and I'm just going to wrap it all the way around. And then I'm going to use my blow dryer on high heat. And well, I kind of rotate back and forth between high and low heat because this gets hot. This little blow dryer really heats up. And I do get a pot holder in just a moment you'll see and hold on to the end of it don't burn your fingers and I'm just moving the nozzle back and forth and just trying to evenly melt not really melt but you know soften up that wax so that my tissue will start to just meld into the candle y'all I can't wait for you to see the end result I'm just rubbing my hand over the parchment just to make sure everything is going to adhere and there's no ends that are not attached to the candle and because the candle is kind of soft, you will want to set it aside and just let it re-harden. And y'all, it is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. This video is part of the first of the month collaboration and is hosted each month on the first day of the month and our host is Brenda at Rustic and Lace DIY and Krista at Krista's Crafty Life and guys I'll have their channels along with that playlist down in my description box and pinned to the first comment. Make sure you go and say hello and if you hear from the playlist hey welcome so happy to have you here. We're 
going to be making a very neutral, beautiful fall wreath. And we're going to be using an 18 inch grapevine wreath and this one came from Michael's. I've already trimmed it up and cleaned it up a bit and this gorgeous lamb's ear, it came from Walmart y'all. I could not believe it. I cannot find beautiful lamb's ear like this at a good price anymore. Anyway, I've just clipped off these long tails. Going to add a little hot glue because I want to make sure that my stems are going to stay put. We're making this wreath one-sided. I love one-sided wreaths. Number one, it's easy to do and it's so versatile. Now y'all, I'm going to get really carried away in adding in this green wreath way too much. Now I made this last year and I'm upcycling it for this year and I did go back and trim back a good bit of this green wreath. It's still a lot in there but I trimmed some of it back just to make it look a little more nice and tidy. For whatever reason, I didn't have a large white pumpkin so I'm just going to make one. And this is obviously from the Dollar Tree and so is the sock. I just removed that outer covering and through a little bit of magic and editing, we have a white pumpkin. And then I've left an opening right between the two, where the two groups of greenery would meet and that's where I'm going to hot glue this pumpkin. And then I'm just going to continue to layer the smaller pumpkins up the side. And these medium sized pumpkins, these came from Walmart and y'all by now this was like two, maybe even three years ago I found these and they came on a stem of three. I just cut them down and then the little tiny white pumpkins you'll see in just a second, I found those at the Dollar Tree. Now as I mentioned earlier, I am upcycling this wreath so by now this was a couple of years ago that um, I had all this stuff so I don't know if the Dollar Tree and Walmart will have them this year. But you can always create your own pumpkins like I did with socks. We're going to upcycle this Hello Fall sign and I believe it came from Hobby Lobby. I've had it about three years or so and it's also got a couple of layers of paint on it and y'all I took the lazy way out. I should have sanded it down. I did not so I ended up having to give it three coats of paint to cover this white up and the paint that I'm using is Waverly Pumpkin and Truffle. I just mixed it together because I wanted a kind of burnt orangey color. I just love that color this year for some reason. It's just my color. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give it three layers of paint and then we'll move on to attaching it to our wreath. Now when I first made this wreath, I added a bow to it. The bow is beautiful. I love the ribbon and I'll pop a picture at the end and you'll be able to see what the original wreath looked like. I just used my blow dryer on high heat and it melted the hot glue. I just used my popsicle stick and scraped off any excess that might have been on there. And I removed it from the bow. I'm going to reuse that bow at some point in time, y'all. I never throw anything away anymore. I'm just using hot glue to attach the sign. Now, if you're going to put yours outside, you might want to use something a little more permanent. E6000 Gorilla Gel Glue, that sort of thing. But mine's going to be inside. So I'm just using hot glue and it's going to set up really fast because I'm trying to get this completed for this video. Y'all, I love this. I absolutely love this color this summer. You're going to have to tell me which wreath do you prefer, the one with the bow or the one with the sign? Oh yeah, another little tip. I use a little soft, clean paintbrush and just brush it over my projects to remove any hot glue strings that might be left. I just love this. I really think switching out the bow for the sign was a great improvement and removing some of that excess greenery. Just give it a whole new vibe and just refreshed it. And it's just so easy to do and you can save money. And for me, saving space. <laughs> because I am running out of room, y'all, truly. We're going to give this pumpkin a much needed makeover. I've taken it outside, given it a couple of coats of the Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte. And once it's dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to tape it off into four sections. And the sections that doesn't have the painter's tape facing inwards, those are the sections we're going to be painting. You'll see what I mean here. And I'm going to give each of the sections, I ended up having to give them three coats of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Celery.
When I removed the painter's tape, I noticed that my lines weren't very good, weren't very straight. I told y'all before, I'm a messy painter. And to help cover that up and disguise that and to give some definition to the segments, I'm going to go in where the green and the white meet. And with this gold bead wrap, this is just from the Dollar Tree, I've cut it into strips. And I went ahead and removed that really sticky backing. I just don't like that. So I just pulled it off and removed it. Using a little bit of hot glue, I'm just going to go in between again where the green and the white segments meet only. I want to take a second and shout out my subscribers. Y'all are the absolute best in the world. It was just the best birthday week ever. Y'all helped me get to my 3,000 subscriber goal. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for all your sweet comments, for returning to watch my videos, all the thumbs up, and just being so sweet and kind. And I truly appreciate that. We don't have enough kindness in this world, and I have so many wonderfully kind subscribers. And again, I am just so very appreciative of that, and I just wanted you to know that. I'm going to decoupage each of the white segments. Y'all didn't think I was going to leave those blank, did you? Y'all know me better than that. But anyway, I'm using tissue, and I printed out more of these beautiful fall florals from Canva. And once the ink dried, I came back with this hairspray and give it a good spray. Let that dry, then I popped it in my oven on 200 degrees for about five minutes. Please keep an eye on it for safety reasons. Then I'll come in, and I'm going to fussy cut each of the flowers out. I'm not going to show you how to do that in detail again. I just showed you that in the first DIY. I don't want to bore you too much. But the reason for the hairspray in the oven, that is to set your ink and hopefully prevent any bleeding whenever you're putting your Mod Podge on your surface. Now, spoiler alert, I did have a little bit of bleeding, and I think there was two causes of that. One is I got too heavy-handed with the Mod Podge like I always do. So just be aware, maybe a little bit less Mod Podge. Two, I'm using a sponge for this project and I had the sponge too wet. It needs to be just slightly damp. I know I always use plastic wrap because that is my absolute favorite tool to use when I'm decoupaging. But for another project, I tried using plastic wrap with tissue and it kept pulling at the tissue. And tissue is very forgiving, a lot more forgiving than napkins. But anyway, back to this project. It just kept pulling it, so I switched over to using a sponge, and it worked like a charm. So my friends here on YouTube that use the sponge, I finally tried it. And y'all, if you haven't tried it, go ahead and give it a try. It is, especially when you're using tissue, for whatever reason, it just works perfectly. Now, one thing I do want to tell you, I only tap, tap, tap with this sponge. I don't drag it or pull it across or rub it or anything like that. I don't, even though tissue is a lot more substantial than a napkin, you still want to be careful. And once I have everything just pressed down and in place, I will go back over the entire piece of tissue or flower with another layer of Mod Podge, and then I will hit it with the blow dryer and make sure everything's completely dry before I rotate to the next section. Now you could absolutely stop right here, add a stem to it, call it complete. We're not going to stop here. We're going to continue on. I've taken one of these little round styrofoams from the Dollar Tree and cut it down just a little bit and then hot glued it to the top. And we're going to add some beautiful flowers to the top of our pumpkin. I've always wanted to create one of these and I've just, this year is the year to do it. And I thought this would be the perfect size pumpkin to do so. Now all my florals, this is left over from last year, year before that, year before that. I never throw anything away, y'all know that. This that I'm cutting down, I believe this is from Hobby Lobby. Don't quote me on that because I've had it for so long. So I'm just cutting the center piece out and then just pushing it straight down into the top of that foam. And so I want that to just be kind of like my center and just kind of coming out. Y'all know I love wild and crazy, anything flowers just over the top. And these beautiful white sunflowers, these are from Walmart. And again, I've had these for two to three years. These have really held up and they were just smooshed in my container. I just used my steamer to fluff them back out. And that's a little trick I use all the time because I keep my florals in totes. And when it comes time to use them again, I get my steamer out and just go over them a little bit. And it just fluffs them right out and gets all the little kinks and wrinkles out. Anyway, I popped three of the sunflowers in, and now I'm going in with these really pretty dahlias. 
think I'm saying that right. And these are from the Dollar Tree. And I didn't like the foliage that was on there. I just stripped that off and added some of this extra foliage that I snipped off of the sunflowers. It was just way too much. And then put that on there. And I'm just, I know I usually like to work in odd numbers, but for whatever reason, it's three and three worked with this. And then again, I'm just going in with other odd and end pieces that I have left over from other projects, popping them in. Now I will tell you, the red that I'm putting in, the red beads and then the little red leaves that's on the table, I do remove those later on. It just was not working and I kept looking at my pumpkin and looking at it and thinking something is not, just not jiving. So I pulled those out and I was like, yes, they needed to go. They're beautiful, but just not for this project. Now I only have two of these. I have no idea what they're called. Maybe cattails? I'm not sure, but I just love them with the little feathers sticking out. Wish I had three, but that's all that I had left over from a project last year. So I'm just making them work. And I just kept feeling that something was off and this is where I start to pull out the red and then the little flowers that's laying there on the table. Aren't they gorgeous? They're just so sweet and just very, to me, delicate looking. These came from Dollar Tree this year. These were actually meant for another project that I have coming up soon. But I'm so glad that I decided to pull them out and just use them in this arrangement. I think it's just the perfect finishing touch. I replaced the red berries with these little bunches of white berries. These are much shorter. I just didn't have any that was long like the red, but I think this worked much better. And y'all, I am so in love with this. Of course, as I always tell you, you can use any colors, whatever you had on hand. I may do with what I had. And this is what I came up with. I absolutely love it. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I am over the moon for it. I hope I've been able to inspire you a little bit today, just finding things that's already in your home and upcycling them, just tweaking them a little bit to just create beautiful, elegant decor. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch my video. Don't forget about the playlist down in the description box. Thank you, Brenda and Krista, for hosting this collaboration, and I will see y'all soon.